So I'd like to move on now to um, um, Declan um, McCafferty from Grimshaws, who's going to talk now about um, station design and active streets. Okay, so I, I, I uh, so my name's Declan McCafferty. I'm a partner at Grimshaw Architects. Uh, it's nice to hear London Bridge getting shouts out as a good example. Uh, London Bridge was one of the projects I worked on. I've also been working on the design of uh, some of the Grand Paris Express metro station projects in, in Paris. And more recently, uh, I've been working on HS2 Euston station. Um, so D David said I was going to show I was going to show some examples of how I'm going to improve Houston Station. I uh, I may have to disappoint you, David. So so I will show some some of the work that we've been doing. Some of the, the Houston the, the work that we're doing on Houston we will be sharing and doing public consultation on later in the year. But um, unfortunately, due to confidentiality, I can't share any of the current work that we're doing. What I thought I'd do is show, um, I'm an architect, I, I would share some of the, the drawings we've done in terms of analysis about what, what, why do stations not support active streets? Because they, they, you know, the, a few people have mentioned, Christian mentioned the, the, the historical issues that stations have had. Uh, and the impact that they have on their surrounding communities. And then maybe, look. so looking at a citywide scale, then maybe looking a, a little bit more at a neighborhood scale. And we, I, can, I can show some, some of the work that was done on a previous scheme on Houston on, on cycling. And then uh, again, just some, some hand sketches I've done uh, around some of the station work, looking at trying to solve uh, issues at a, more, at a more human scale. So some of the ideas that we're working on and hopefully most of these ideas will work their way through to HS2 Houston Station when when we're um, when we're finished the, the the concept design. So uh, looking first at, at city scale issues. Now I think a lot of these slides will repeat some of the some of the analysis that everyone has, has said so far. In 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 reality, stations should support active modes of transport. They take you normally into town and city centres, uh, and from that from that place. You know, from that place, walking and cycling should be easy, but they, but they don't. And there's a number of, you know, Christians mentioned the historical issues. But there's, there's also some physical issues that are preventing stations becoming real hubs of walking and cycling. The first one is many uh, terminus stations, so many of the stations in London, um, are end loaded. It's changing slightly, but it means that you come off the train, you get out at one place, all the pedestrian movement is focused at one place, which becomes a problem because because of the, the public space available. That causes congestion issues, which which decreases the quality of the public realm. And all the uh, surface transport modes, you know, including cycling, but also buses and and taxis and London Underground connections, all happen in one place, which means that the the public realm gets overly congested. Meanwhile, the flanks of stations, the, the, the walls that face into the surrounding communities, often end up um, dead and un, un, unactivated. You know, and you can see that on Eversholt Street in Euston, York Way and King's Cross, uh, even St Pancras Way. Um, so do you, that, that's a problem that all stations have, or that many stations have, and the severance that that causes has an impact on the quality of the public realm and the quality of the streetscape mainly on the sides of stations, less so in the fronts of stations. And that you can, you can see that that's not just a, a, a public realm issue, that actually impacts you know, the, the, the investment in those areas and the life chances of people who grow, grew up in those areas. You just need to look at the difference between say, Summerstown and Regent's Park West estate compared to Bloomsbury, all of which are equidistant from, from Houston, but it's the, it's the um, it's the, the the communities to the east and the west that suffer more from that severance. Um, ch changes are happening, um, and I, I had a I had a set of slides that was going to show how we might resolve some of this, but we're we're a bit we're a bit short of time, and I can, I think I can describe it uh, through some of the other work that we're doing. But uh, stations are changing; they're becoming multi-centric. Platforms tend to be getting longer. 
therefore, you get multiple concourses, you get multiple front doors. Station spaces are beginning to be used as extensions of the public realm and open up and have a more outward facing aspect to the surrounding to the surrounding streets, all of which encourages street activity and walking. And you can you can see that in you see that in London Bridge. You can see that in St Pancras. Um, particularly uh, east-west across St Pancras. And at, at times, St. Pa- outside of peak hours, St Pancras, the spaces within St Pancras are actually moved, used more by non-passengers than, than passengers. So uh, this is some early work. And as I say, this isn't the current um, scheme we're doing on Euston. Although a lot of, a lot of these lessons are, are informing uh, what we're currently doing on Euston. So HS2, um, HS2 Euston is, well, let me see if I can draw on here, is actually this portion to the west. The existing network rail station is to the east. So we're, we, we don't have the freedom to redevelop the whole footprint. But one of the thing that we um, focused on from the beginning of the design was looking to push the platforms below ground so that the platforms and the train movements don't become a severance at ground level as they are in the existing network rail station. That means you can you can create concourses and you can distribute those concourses north, north, south, and you can start to align them with key routes. So aligning concourses with say the high street of um, uh, Drummond Street, you know, a, a really active, really successful local high street means that Number one, you encourage you 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 create views out onto those streets. You support local economies, and you encourage people to move east west along local streets. So you don't you don't close close the station off um, to, uh, to 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 the surrounding streets. What that means is you have to break apart the station itself and the, and align it and focus those those key station areas. With, uh, with the with, to match the kind of street grain and street pattern of the surrounding of the surrounding streets, which is something I think we'll, we, you will see in the new HS2 Euston station. Um, in terms of in, in terms of in, in terms of the uh, station itself, a lot of the station spaces are are focused in the in the centre of the station and around the edges. We're creating opportunities for development. Lendlease are doing a a master plan for the whole campus, including the network rail station, which means that those links you could see up and over the network rail roof will be enabled by uh, a future land lease, uh, a future land lease scheme, so that some of those east-west routes can start to continue at multiple levels across the station campus. This just shows um, some of the work, uh, very illustratively, some of the work we've been doing on cycling. Now again, the, the station is is a severance to particularly to east-west cycling, and that you know that, that's mainly driven by the network rail station being at grade. We're introducing um, a new north-south route, so to, to pick up to pick up the slightly informal routes from Park Village East onto Regents Park, to pick up the slightly frightening but gradually improving route along Hampstead Road, and take that down and into Coburg Street and around the edge of the station to link down to uh, Bloomsbury. So linking back into the really successful cycle infrastructure in Bloomsbury to support the east-west routes, that, that north-south route can then link uh, through south of Euston Road into those uh, routes in northern Bloomsbury to link across uh, across east, east-west. Um, so so there's, some, there's some really big potential improvements in that. Uh, Lendlease are also looking in their master plan to create some upper level cycling routes across across the roof. Um, we're creating uh, distributed cycle hubs along that route. So about 2,000 uh, space cycle hubs in total, 2,200, two um, in, in, including cycle hire. Um, and one thing worth, worth mentioning is, and, and th- there are good examples in Holland, uh, as everyone has, has mentioned, but even in even in Holland, they sometimes struggle to get those cycle hubs into active streetscapes, and and this is where there's sometimes a conflict between the activity that or the lack of activity that cycle hubs can provide um, uh, with the kind of active streets that we're trying to create al- around the station. There's there's a conflict. It's not it's not unsolvable, and and most cycle hubs now have. Uh, cycle facilities use multi-stories. Um, you ha- have cycle shops embedded in the frontage of, of of the hubs themselves. But it is um, 
uh, they, once you start getting above 2,000 cycle spaces, it becomes quite a large, they, they become quite large structures in themselves because obviously we can't, we have no space underground to put them because of the, the, the trains are underneath the street. Um, so uh, looking, the, the, these are just some examples that we've had. Some of these are working through different station schemes we've done on competition entries. Some of them are looking at earlier versions we've looked at on, on Houston. One of the things to, I, I, for me, one of the frustrating things about, about pavement space around stations, first of all, is you normally end up with a huge uh, line of bollards. The, the streets around them are quite tight and you can see that around, around London Bridge and you need hostile vehicle mitigation to, to stop vehicles mounting and driving into the, driving into the station uh, as part of a terrorist attack. What we were trying to do here was look at the age, look if there was a way to celebrate and provide views into the station, but provide planted edges uh, along, along the edge and seating, embed seating into, into the station so that the street can actually be part of an extension of the dwell space within the stations themselves and provide uh, enough activity that you can kind of curate that edge without it just being bollards. So using, you know, using retail kiosk seating and planting as, as part of that uh, amenity around the edge of the station. Um, it, it, the, the critical thing uh, for, for us, and it's it's fairly obvious, but it's it's know your audience and, and kind of know the station community and get to know what um, the, the different types of passengers that are in the station, but also stations have now become such public spaces. It's actually getting to know what are the needs of the surrounding communities and the non-traveling users of the of the, of the building this this was a scheme that we did as a competition entry looking at the temporary spaces so temporary use of spaces around a station under construction that's also a, a, a passionate interest of mine because some of these projects can take seven to nine years to build therefore the temporary public space that you can create the activity you can create and the life that you can create um it can 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 help embed embed the projects even while they're being constructed in uh, in the surrounding communities and some of them are designed to become permanent uh community spaces this this is uh, looking at uh, the western gardens uh near drummond street in houston so looking looking to create a, a permanent community space alongside the station it's uh, alongside the station itself um one of the other things, and I think uh, the Dundee students were mentioning uh, opportunities for pocket parks. You know, if you've got a if you've got a three hundred meter square piece of space, is there an opportunity to create pocket parks? And certainly along Coburg Street in Houston, we're looking at opportunities like this, as well as a, in in other in other stations. This was just looking at a small pocket park that would incorporate Sheffield stands. You know, within within the planting, uh, incorporate seating. And you know, and also give an opportunity for some play space or or art. And one of the one of the things we were thinking about here is is it's in quite a built up area. The views that you get from the kind of uh, station forecourts, which are quite often limited uh, by buildings, providing some views through to that Parker Park gives a hint, even to passengers, that there's something more interesting happening on the, on the streets around the edge of the station, and attract attract their use and create a Parker Park, which is both amenity to local communities, but, but also to station users as well as part of the, the wider dwell space. And final slide, um, this is, a, this is a, a bugbear of mine, is the, the public seating around stations tends to be absolutely abysmal. And um, but it, it, it should be relatively simple. There, 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 there tends to be you know, two types of people who use that seating around stations. There, there's well more more than two types, but there, there are local local com local communities that use it, who tend to be in small social groups. There tend to be travellers who sometimes travel in small social groups, and quite often travellers that, tr that travel together in twos or ones. So there's there's always a demand for places to sit and take in the street view on your own without feeling you're entering a social group. But you also need you know concave spaces to sit 
so that you can face towards each other in a, in a social group and have have a sandwich of coffee and a, and a normal conversation. And I think w- what we're looking at in, in many of our station projects is looking to create that kind of variety of seating around stations, but also create space to sit in full sun, which would be pleasant on most days, but on, you know, on days like today, it's also quite pleasant to sit in shade. So thinking about the detail, the human scale about how people can use and will be encouraged to uh, behave socially, but also be allowed to um, uh, to read a paper, look at their phone on their own, um, is, is part of the essential thinking about how we activate those streets and get people, pull people out of the stations as part of their active journey for walking and cycling. Uh, and that's it for me. Declan, that is amazing. Thank you very much. That was a really that was fascinating to understand the sort of design development that's gone into into those um, in, into the new Euston station.